If you say you can, you're correct. If you say you can't, you're correct. Okay. Life is not a rehearsal, just one chance. So what do you want out of this life you have? And I should write that And write down. it down. And the acronym in TTA is for Thoughts, Emotions and Actions. So Thoughts, Emotion, Actions. So basically your thoughts drive your emotions mm -hmm. and your emotions drive your actions. Athletes are a very good analogy for all this. So you can imagine you're Usain Bolt, uh, an athlete, or you are Ronaldo, Messi, or Mbappe or, as a footballer. Mm. You're showing yourself. You have an action plan. I'm going to practice every day, go to the gym, yes. uh, do what I need to do. Then Usain Bolt gets to the track or... Mbappe and these footballers get to the field and they start arguing with the spectators. They start arguing with them. You know how spectators boo you, mm. they, they slag you off, yes. and then you start turning around, fighting with them, instead of focusing on your race. Yeah. Now, when you lose the race, does it matter what that spectator said? So you find that even with athletes, the reason why the Mbappes, the Messis, and the Bolts of the world is that they tune all that out. Because they have the, they have their focus on their goal, the determination to win, they, they have a belief in themselves, they have a plan, and they're going to execute regardless of all the noise and the negativity and the abuse and the shouting. Because the minute you lose that focus and you start engaging with the, <laughs> with the crowd... With the noise you know, you, you lose. You lose. So that's job. why you see that. And we have so many distractions right now from social media to our family, friends. You talk about determination. You talk about rooting yourself, having an action plan. Today, there's a relative who has lost someone. Tomorrow, there's a wedding you've been invited to. The next day, you know, there's a friend in trouble and all of that. And that's why I really love that you have decided to give this time to us because even though this is our first session, we're kind of just laying the ground that I want to get into the nitty gritties of how we can arm ourselves against all these distractions. I can help you us. easily with that one answer. Mm. You cannot help anyone when you're broke. <laughs> Should frame that and put yes, it on the you way. can't help anyone when you're broke. It's as simple as that. That's always been my answer to all that. Because yes. again, um, I'm Nigerian and we have the same, it's Africa. You know, we have the same demands from family, friends, mm. relatives. But as what I always say, you, I can't help everyone if I'm broke. So the best way I can help people is to first get become financially I'm sound okay. myself. Mm. And that's why now I'm able to support lots of people personally and through the charity I run. But if I was broke, I can't help anybody. That's true. So you have to get your priorities right. So yes, yeah. if, you, if you want to get emotional and say, so I need to help this, I need to help that, and you're forever broke. And that's the sad thing. The minute you're broke and you can't help them, they turn to someone else and yeah. leave you alone. <laughs> that is true. You're not useful to them. Why should they? So it's, as, it's really, yeah. as, it's, that's, that's the reality mm. of life. You can't help people when you're broke. Yeah. So yeah. if you really want to help people, get your finances right start earning a good income, get yourself comfortable financially, mm -hmm. then you, you, it, you, you can help people from um, the excess you earn. Yes. But you can't help out of luck. You can't help out of luck. You can help from the excess that you earn. Now, uh, and I'm speaking for myself, but this is probably something that applies to a lot of people who might be watching today. Um, and I've spoken also to my friends who, you know, usually say to me, uh, I have this idea, I have this plan, but I don't know, so-and-so failed. You know, there's no, we don't have enough statistics. There's always something that is causing fear or something that is keeping them in this state of, 
procrastination. And so that's why I wanted to talk about this today. How do we deal with the fear to fail, with the fear to begin? Sometimes it's just the fear to even begin. Mm. We've not even thought that far ahead. Um, and also that this procrastination that keeps us stuck. Because sometimes it's not even that we don't have the great ideas or the money to invest. It's just the fear that we can't, that is numbing. Well, I think this is actually why it's very important with um, with wealth psychology and getting your mind right, because you know there's an acronym we use called T. Like I mean, Rwanda does a lot of T, so we all know T. T E A, and the acronym in T T E A is for thoughts, emotions, and actions. So thoughts, emotion, actions. So basically, your thoughts drive mm. your emotions, mm. and your emotions drive your actions. Yes. So if you have negative thoughts, which is where all this fear, doubt comes in, that's where your negative thoughts, mm. that would drive your emotions, which would drive your actions. So basically, the thing you actually do, what you actually do, is driven by the way you think. So whether you do nothing about it, you get scared about your plans and all that is driven by your thoughts. Yes. Now, the only way you can begin to deal with those things now is, again, we have to go back a bit, although we'll talk about it in depth more later, is that first of all, you need to have a conversation with yourself as to what do you, not your friends or your family, what do you want out of your life? Wow. Those are questions to definitely ask. So, What if, do I want? Yes, out of your own life. We're all different people. Yeah. We all have different goals and objectives. So let me just give you an and example. And is this tied to finances or ge no, in no, general? No, no, it's general. Because this is where yeah. what will start to guide your thoughts. Yeah. So, for example, if you say, okay, if I die at the age of in my 90s and I want to have sent my children to university and school, mm. own my own home, be debt free, yeah. be able to travel around the world. Mm. Just think about it. This is what you want for your own life. Mm. Take some time to think about that. Because they always say life is not a rehearsal. It's just one chance. So what do you want out of this life you have? And I should write that And write down. it down. Now, Homework. <laughs> now once you've now too. decided that, okay, this is what I want out of my life, mm. the next question is how are you going to achieve it? Okay. Because, of course, if you want to be debt-free, own your own home, pay for your children's school fees, go, you know, get them set up, it's going to require money. Yes. So the next thing is, okay, this, my salary I'm earning or whatever I'm doing, is it going to help me achieve get there. that? Yes. Obviously, most, most of the time, the answer is no. So you now begin to see where the fear might be coming to go down because if I want to achieve this for my life, there are certain things I have to do. If I do not do them, I am not going to achieve this. Mm -hmm. So this is now beginning to help you with that fear. That, okay, oh, I can't, I can't. Because you're thinking, okay, if I don't do this, mm. I'm not going to achieve these things in my life. Yeah. And hopefully that, that if I, that in itself would now be a fear of you not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you now be scared, that, look, I must do something every day. Yeah to do that. And just to conclude on fear, you know, if again, the acronym fear, F-E-A-R, is false expectations appearing real. Mm -hmm. Fear is not real. Fear is not real. You know, from a medical point of view, we're only born with two fears. We're born with a fear of falling and a fear of loud noises. Wow. So if anyone listening to this, you're not scared of falling and you're scared of loud noises, <laughs> any other fears you have, is and learned. Unreal. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not, you're it, allowed to fear falling and you're allowed to fear loud noises, but anything else is your mind. It's, 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 it's your mind. It's, it's learned behavior. Yeah. And I think this is where sometimes it depends on your upbringing, your, the people you move around with, if you associate with, that can instill this fear with you. Because you mentioned, oh, I heard that person fail. I heard this one. Mm -hmm. I heard that happen. Mm -hmm. This is all learned behavior. So you carry all this, you know, irrational. Uh, beliefs yes. and you have to say to yourself why I and then obviously you freeze when you're when you're afraid you freeze you yes. don't do anything yes 
you just don't do anything and doing if it's trading you can't you can't trade if it's anything really you can't yeah because for example now if you're fearful you're not even going to look for whether you can your relative or you yours own land mm. you're not going to look for whether you can find land you're not going to look for uh, educate yourself about how to farm you're not going to find a market for you're not just going to do anything mm -hmm. because you're already you know there's a yeah. there's, there's something else called loser's limb looking for excuses to fail before you start. <laughs> you know, you look for for reasons you're going to fail before you even start. Guilty as charged. So once you have all this irrationality, mm. you just won't do anything. Yes. And if you do nothing, guess what will happen? Nothing, nothing will happen will to happen. you. Nothing will happen, yes. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. So okay. that's a guarantee. So loses limp. Loses limp. Looking for excuses to fail before, before. you even start. Wow. Actually, let me give myself as an example of fear, <laughs> mm. because when I was um, doing, my, started my business as a medical doctor, I had a big fear of having bad credit. Yeah. Because without good credit, I couldn't get loans to buy houses yes, and all yes, that, yes, and yes, I was heavily into real estate. Yes, yes. So I, I had this huge fear that mm. my gosh, I shouldn't have a blemish on my credit record. Yeah. I used to have my credit record sent to me every week. I was, Every week. Yeah, I was that paranoid of my, I used to check it. Now, when I started defaulting on my loans, mm. going to court for county court judgment, my credit was crap. I had <laughs> horrible credit. But nothing happened to me. I didn't die. Mm. That fear then went away. When the actual thing I was fearful of happened, I thought, so what? Then it's here, we have to the, deal with it. The thing with same thing with bankruptcy, like you mentioned earlier, I was trying to work hard so I wouldn't become bankrupt because I was scared my whole life of being end. bankrupt. Yeah, and when the bankruptcy happened, it was like, So what? Why was I fearful? You're still here, I'm still here. So, again, it's learned behavior, it's not, it's not a real emotion. It, you just get yourself caught up in it. And I've been there myself where I've had all these fearful thoughts, and when what I was afraid of happened. Mm. It was like, yeah, okay, it. Mm. so what? Move on. Wow. I just felt that I wasted my time being fearful of those things. So since it is a learned behavior, it can be unlearned. Yes. We can teach ourselves to function within the presence of fear yeah. and also to um, learn to, I guess, to... Act in spite of your fears. Act in, that's it. You say it better. Because Act I think, in spite of, again, this is where people, if you... That's why it's so crucial to listen to interviews with successful people, mm -hmm. read books with successful people. Mm. If you speak to Richard Branson, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, all of them still have fears. They all have fears. Everyone We're all human. The them. only difference is that they act in spite of their fears. Yeah. That's the only difference. Wow. Absolutely. They're that's, not, not frozen by it. It's a very good point uh, to close today. But before I, we end, um, part of doing anything, like you said, the action plan and all that is goal setting. Yeah. So I want us to end on that today. Um, and the, the questions for me is, how do you set goals in a realistic way, in an effective way? And how do you ensure that you can follow up on those goals and actually get to the destination that you set out to? Uh, it's quite simple, actually, because number one is the question I asked earlier, what do you want out of your life? So this is not... Uh, yeah. I think that people, needs to be answered. Yeah, mm. I think people need to be careful not to make this an academic exercise. It's a, it's a real-life exercise. It's not mm. academic. Yes, yes, yes. So you need to personalize it for yourself. Uh, again, let me use myself as an example. My own goal when I um, started working as a medical doctor, my goal, I can't remember how old I was then. Um, anyway, the age doesn't matter. But I just started working as a medical doctor. But my goal then was to make sure before I'm 55 years old, I am no longer working as a doctor. I'm retired. I'm earning enough money as a passive That's income. 50. 55. Mm -hmm. 55, make sure you're earning a passive income and you're retired, no longer doctor. Yes. That was the goal. That was the goal at 55. So uh, I'm now 53 and I achieved that 10 years ago. So 
That is that was my goal, but it's possible. Yeah, but the, the, the key here is, like I said, wait, 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 wait. You started ten years early, so realistically, I should be if my goal is to retire at thirty-five, at forty-five, which is my goal. I'm well on track. This is ten years early. No, it, it, again, the time period is not the key. <laughs> the time period is not the key. Like I said, I I said fifty-five, but I achieved it much earlier than that. Yeah. But the, the, the key is the goal. So my goal was to retire as a doctor and make sure I have enough passive income to be able to travel when I want to, yeah. do what I want to, be the master of my own time and be able to give back to charity and help my friends and family. So that was my goal. Yes. Then this is where the action plan comes in. How am I going to achieve that goal? That goal? This is where the goal setting comes in. I know my medical doctor salary is not going to help me achieve that the only way i can achieve that is from doing business so i need to learn more about real estate the financial markets how to handle finances how to set up businesses so that's where my daily effort was in, in, in that action plan to be so able to create... So you kept the job, but yeah, you started to exactly. create... Um, multiple streams of income. Multiple streams of income. Yeah. Okay. But that's... So as I'm saying, it's not... People shouldn't look at it as an academic exercise. Mm -hmm. The principle is, what do you want out of life? Mm. What do you want to achieve? Your goal might be, oh, I want to own a school. Your goal might be, I want to build an orphanage. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So you might find, okay, to have a school or build an orphanage, I need... $500,000. How are you going to achieve $500,000? If you're earning, let's say, for example, a thousand pounds a month. That's a good income. Yes. Some but, might be earning half of that. But a thousand pounds a month after expenses, how much do you have left? So with what you have left, if you add that up, then would that get you to 500000 <laughs> mm. <laughs> Probably never. Yeah. So you now have to look at realistically, okay, if I want to get 500000 unfortunately, the only way you can now do is start creating multiple streams of income. Yes. Figure out what else can I do yeah. and to, to, to add to what I already have, how to efficiently manage time is something I want us to get yeah. to uh, as well. But for today, as we wrap up, and that's your camera, um, from everything that you've shared today, what's the one thing that you say, uh, even if they forgot everything we talked about today? That's the one thing that they shouldn't forget and should be the takeaway from this conversation as they embark on this journey to become financially liberated and free and build generational wealth. Uh, I will quote, uh, I'll quote Henry Ford, mm. the famous automobile guy. So Henry Ford says, if you say you can, you're correct. If you say you can't, you're correct. Okay. So, I'll repeat that. He says, if you say you can, you're you correct. Can. Yes. If you say you can't, you're, still correct. you're correct. Meaning that what you say to yourself will come to pass. Mm. Hence why world psychology and the mind is very important. So, where to begin. So, if you tell, okay, I am going to be wealthy, I'm going to achieve my goals, I'm going to do what it takes, I am going to do this, then you can do it. If you say, I can't, I can't do it, I'm afraid, oh my gosh, then yes, you will not achieve anything. So if you say you can, you're correct. If you say you can't, you're correct. You decide what you tell yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. For making the time uh, to talk to me, to guide me, to walk this journey with me, and also uh, for accepting to bring our AMA family along. I'm looking forward to where this ends um, and to achieving some of those uh, goals I've had since I was a little girl. Sour. <laughs> Sour. <laughs> and to you who made the time to come along, I hope that you learned something today. It's never too late to work and to dream and to get to where you want to be. I'm Isabel Masozera. Until next time, it's Money Mondays. <laughs>